Mario's airships are a major part of each Mario game. Typically, bosses are on these difficult levels. But is this even possible in real life? Wouldn't that be awesome? Pirate ships without water. So I'm here to get to the bottom of this and deduce a conclusion to this interesting question. The way the Mario franchise displays their airships breaks the laws of physics. Their propellers don't move nearly fast enough. We need to find out just how fast they would need to be. But where do we start? Well, we must find the weight of the flying pirate ship. It's actually very basic and straightforward. What's it made of? Wood. What are the propellers made of? Aluminum or something. Good enough. All we need to do is calculate the amount of space all of this takes up. It's volume. Boats are shaped like this, correct? What shape even is this? Well, I'm sure you've heard of a circle. And you've likely also heard of a sphere. And half a sphere is a hemisphere. So think of the boat's shape as half of what a sphere is to an oval, an ellipsoid. And of course, half of that is a hemellipsoid. That's what a boat's shape is, half of a spherical oval. The volume of a hemellipsoid is two-thirds pi abc, where a is radius 1, b is radius 2, and c is radius 3. Taking real-life measurements of pirate ships, measuring various things in-game, and estimating some values, our ship will be 40 feet wide, 50 feet tall, and 150 feet long, with masts 40 feet high, and a total of 12 5 foot long propellers. Measure, 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 math, 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 we finally get our volume of the wood on the ship, and our volume of the aluminum. Volume times the material's density is its mass, so researching densities of aluminum and wood, and adding, we have the final weight of the pirate ship. 340 tons! Now how on earth does this thing fly? Let's find out. Converting its mass into kilograms, the next step is to find out how much force it puts on the Earth. It's very easy. The gravity of Earth times the mass gives us its earthly force. And we'll use this force for the rest of our calculation. Perhaps you did, or perhaps you didn't, know about the lift equation. It's basically the equation for drag force of helicopter blades. The force we just found is equal to, well, this force. Worry not, it isn't an intimidating equation. It's a simple matter of knowing what to do. Luckily, I do. We'll start with A. This A symbolizes the area one blade sweeps. Assuming it will sweep in a circle, the area is the number pi times the length of the blade squared. We already have established that one blade is five feet long. All to do is to change that number to the perfectly flawless metric system's units, meters. This gives us the swept area of one blade. C sub L is the lifting coefficient, a number that depends on the shape of a propeller and how it lifts something when exposed to wind. And for average propellers, this number sits at about 0.009. Step number final is the density of air. Constantly, throughout every physics video I make, I deal with this variable, as anything to do with air on Earth requires it. How dense is air? If you still don't know, it's 1.225 kilograms per cubic meter. And the N is just the number of propellers, which, if we have three masts with four blades each, is 12 blades in total. And we're done! We've filled in the swept area, air density, thrust coefficient, force, and number of propellers. Oh wait, we aren't done yet. We've still got to deal with the velocity, but we don't have a number for velocity. We need to solve for it. Algebra states that if we multiply 2 by both sides, cancelling it out here, and then divide by a, rho, n, and c by both sides, cancelling it out here, and then taking the square root of both sides, cancelling it out here, we can find out what the velocity is. Oh, the build-up is killing me. To lift a real airship into the air, you'd need 5 foot blades spinning at 9,106.45 kilometers per hour. Americans, that's 5,658.49 miles per hour. Sure, that's a large number, but what would it really look like? I don't really want to get into more equations, but here's what we can use to find out how many full cycles per second one of the blades needs to make. Since there are 12 blades, each one needs to spin nearly 265 cycles every second. But, away with velocities and forces, how much power would be required to, well, power this ship of the sky? As you know, power is an electrical value and whatnot, but it's also used in mechanics. It's pretty similar. 
any given force times a velocity will give the power. And since we know both, we get the power of this whole ship's usage. 7,771,546,333.07 watts. And what exactly does that mean? Ugh, physics and your confusing values? Well, let's compare it to the energy a house uses in a month. In one month, a house uses an average of 911 kilowatt hours. In only 10 minutes, our volatational vessel creates 1,420 times more energy in 10 minutes than a house does in one month. We have an excellent piece of machinery on our hands. This would be the world's best war weapon, wanted by all countries. Best method of transportation. The only problem is its power consumption, as it would suck up so much power, it would be a uselessly wasteful ship to use. But it's still a cool idea. Mushroom Kingdom, your expensive coins definitely pay off in warfare. That's all for now. Until next time, I'm the Theorizer.